It's time again for the Science Bowl. Zoo Parade for Five. What big teeth the hippo has are actually a pair of these. Science Potpourri for Ten. Would a snake most likely eat every day? Every week, Dateline Science for Ten. Why are some elephants wearing necklaces these days? Green things for 15. And now, here's your host, Mr. Z himself, Dave Zarin. Thank you and welcome to the Science Bowl today in Elementary Edition 2. Outstanding elementary schools here to play our game. Let's meet them right now. First from Port Towns Elementary, say hello to Eunice Aisi, David Bangura, and Oscar Escamilla. And from Samuel Massey Elementary School, here they are, Khalid Taylor, Donnell Powell, and Mikkel Demissi. And now here are the categories of questions we use on Science Bowl. Okay, Mr. Z, here's today's categories. Green things, questions about plants and all things green and growing. Zoo Parade, a Noah's Ark of questions about animals. Body systems, we'll see how much you know about yourself, about things like breathing and growing and digesting your food. Let's get physical. Questions that test your knowledge of physics and chemistry, earth science and space science. Then there's science potpourri. Here's a grab bag of science questions. Everything from air pollution to the kitchen zinc. And finally, Dateline Science. We'll ask you about science history and science in the news. Here on Science Bowl, our game board reflects question difficulty. The easier questions are on the left, worth 5 and 10 points. The tougher ones, 15, 20, ultimately 25, the toughest of them all. Both of our teams start out at 50 points apiece. No penalties ever for incorrect answers. At the end of the two rounds, one of these two teams will come back to play Beacon Heights for the chance to move on to this year's elementary school semifinals. So we have a lot at stake. As I was telling them earlier, we are very proud of them just for being here today and representing their schools. Let's go over and make sure everything works properly. David, try your buzzer. Thank you, young man. Good luck to you, Oscar, and to Eunice. And Donnell, would you try yours? Thank you. Good luck to you and to Mikkel and Khalid. Are we ready to play this game? Yes. Let's do this thing. Let's have a great game. We go alphabetically P before S. So Port Townsend, David, start us out. Give me a category and a number, please. Green things for five. Green things for five points. Teams. Artichokes and palm trees, like all flowering plants, have vascular systems, but those two plants have one of these, even though it doesn't beat. Port Towns. Heart. A heart. A heart, that's right. Hearts of palm and artichoke hearts. They call them that because they're in the center. They really are not part of the vascular system. Good listening skills. Go, Red. David. Body systems for 10. Body systems for 10 points. Teams. Well, we have just one of these in our eyes. A dragonfly has 28,000 of them. Samuel Massey. Pupil? Not pupil. Good try. We have just one of these in our eyes. But dragonflies have 28,000, Dave. A retina? Lenses. Lenses. They have 28,000 lenses. Try again, Red. Um... Let's get physical for five. Get physical for five points. Teams, it will probably not come as a shock to you, but friction with an object that transfers electrons from you to it is what causes this kind of electricity. Port towns. Static electricity. Yeah, that's it, static electricity. Thank you, Eunice, for helping out that time. Good playing. Go red. Zoo parade for 10. Zoo parade for 10 points. Teams. An old primate with this fleet-footed feline name recently died. This primate had starred in the Tarzan movies 80 years ago. What was the name of that primate? Cheetah. It was Cheetah and Tarzan and Jane. Cheetah supposedly was 80 years old and starred with Johnny Weissmuller and Maureen O'Hara in those way back Tarzan movies. Oh, come on. Go, Red. Zoo Parade for five. Zoo Parade for five points. Teams, it was the night before Christmas and all through the house. Not a creature was stirring, not even one of these. Samuel Massey. A mouse. A mouse, yeah. All right, Donnell, go. Um, Zoo Parade for 15. Zoo Parade for 15 points. Teams, these 
polyp created structures under the water are said to be the rainforests of the ocean. David. S seaweed? Not seaweed, good try. These polyp created structures under the water are said to be the rainforests of the ocean. What do you think, Samuel Massey? Coral? You got that right. Coral reefs. Khalid says, yes, got it. That's the way to play the game. 65 up to 70, 60 for Port Towns. Almost a tie score. Massey, you're in the lead. Go, Donnell. Body systems for five. Body systems for five points. Teams, this joint between your humerus and your radius and ulna bones also names a kind of macaroni. <laughs> Samuel Massey. Pasta? No, no, you didn't quite listen to the question. What joint between your humerus and radius and ulna bones is also the name of a kind of macaroni? Elbow. Elbow macaroni, that's right. Here's your humerus, here are your radius and ulna bones. All right, nice comeback there. All right, you're just five points off the lead. Go, Dave. Let's get physical for 10. Let's get physical 10 points. Teams, your question is as follows. Astronomers cheered recently when Comet Lovejoy dived through the corona of this familiar star and came out the other side unscathed. The comet went diving through what star? David. The sun. The sun, that's right. The corona is the outermost rim of the sun. It's still over 2 million degrees. Somehow that comet made it through. Yay, comet. Go, Red. Green things for 15. Great things, 15 points. Seems multiple choice question. January the 29th is a red letter day for gardeners because that's the day that spring growth starts. Is that because on January 29th there are at least 10 hours in the day that the average temperature is above 40 or that the snow depth is generally less than two inches? Which of those three things would make it a red letter day for gardeners and plants would then start to grow? Samuel Massey. Come on, talk to each other. We think it's um, it's two inches less. Um, wait. Not the snow one. Not the oh. snow one. Port Towns, January 29th, the day when spring growth starts because temperatures are generally above 40 degrees by that point. The day length is 10 hours or more, or the snow depth is less than two inches. The second one. The 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 no, not the snow. Um. I like to pass it over to you. Yes, which one? Um, the second one when the the temperature is above forty degrees. No, it was the one where the day length was ten hours or more. That seems to be the trigger for the growth. All right, the buzzer is rung. That was a quick first round. Almost a tie score. Port Town seventy-five. Samuel Massey seventy. Lots more science ball straight ahead. Don't you go anywhere. We'll be right back. Diet and exercise are never easy. Then again, neither is dying. Sadly, type 2 diabetes, heart disease, and stroke kill nearly a million people a year. Most of these deaths could be prevented. Please, talk to your doctor about your risk for diabetes and heart disease. And if your doctor recommends lifestyle changes or medication, listen. The reason so many die is because not enough are willing to change. You can stop it, starting right now. It's your life. Listen to your doctor. Eat better. Get moving. I always thought being a good mother meant raising my baby myself. But when I got pregnant, I realized I wasn't ready to be a parent. So I did something I thought I could never do. I chose adoption. It was really hard. But I know my baby is with a loving family and has a very bright future. Sometimes choosing adoption is being a good mother. Visit us at ichooseadoption.org. Welcome back to Science Bowl. Thank you for being here today. Here we are in our 26th year of Science Bowl here in Prince George's County, and the students keep getting better and better and better. 
just like these six today. We're so happy to have you guys here from Port Towns. We welcome David and Eunice and Oscar. And you have on customized shirts today, don't you guys? It says, what does it say there? P-T-E-S, Science Bowl, Port Towns Elementary School. And you get to keep those shirts, we hope, right? Yeah. yeah, right. We don't want those to be loners. You guys have certainly earned these here. Nice to have you with us, Dave. Tell us about your school. Who's your principal? Miss Ferrell. Yeah, and she is here today. And she was telling me your school is now eight years old. Mm -hmm. I remember when it first opened. It's a beautiful building, and so many good things go on there. Dave, what is it about Port Towns that you like to brag about? One thing I like to brag about Port Towns is our, our test scores. I t like our test scores in math are really high. Wow. That means you've got some great teachers there, yes. in addition to some good natural talent. And you guys obviously represent that. Uh, tell me about uh, any alternates you had on your team, Dave. Were there some other students that played with you? Yes. Who are they? Gianna, Jakaya, Jorge, and Owen. And we will bring them all out with Ms. Faribault in a few moments. And, of course, your sponsors, right? Yeah. Who sponsors your team? Ms. Powell, Ms. Blackson, and Ms. Smith. Wow. So there's been a lot of effort at Port Towns, and it certainly is showing here you're playing a great game, Dave. Tell me what you do in your spare time. In my spare time, I just like to hang out with my friends. That is just the greatest answer because, you know, when you're, you're only a kid once, you know, and just do kid-type things. But you are a serious-minded young man because you come from a military family and your dad's in the military, and you too aspire to go there, don't you? Yes. What branch of the service, Dave? Uh, Air Force. Air Force, all right. I know how proud your parents, your family is of you, Dave. Doing a nice job today. Oscar, nice to have you with us today. Young man who's got a little menagerie at home, a little Escamilla Zoo, right? What you got at home, Oscar? I have three turtles, two cats, and one dog. Wow. Now, are you responsible for taking care of all those pets? And the dog and one of the cats is my sister's. Oh, so you get the turtles? <laughs> well, two of them. Two of them. Ah. Now, where'd you get these turtles? What, did they catch them in the wild? Did you get them from a pet store? My cousin gave them to me. There were two of them, and then my other cousin gave the last one. Oh, okay. Me. What do turtles eat, Oscar? Uh, turtle food. Turtle food. I love yeah. that answer. All right. <laughs> this guy should be on the comedy stage here. <laughs> nice to have you here, Oscar. And you want to be a veterinarian someday, and you're doing a good job with those animals there at, the, at home. Eunice, tell us about yourself. What do you want to be someday? I want to be a surgeon. Yeah, we were talking about that. Now, how did you get interested? Because that, is re that requires a lot of training, and, you know, you can't be repulsed at the sight of blood and all. Why surgery? Because I'm really good at signs and things like that, and the blood or the thing doesn't really disgust me at all. That's wonderful. Yeah, you have to have that kind of attitude. And you seem very level-headed and calm, just the kind of person you'd want to see if you're coming into surgery, because that is a, such a, a, a perilous time in anybody's life. What do you do in your spare time? Um, I like to read and write short autobiographies yeah. about myself. What kind of books you like? I like fantasies. Fantasy, yeah. And Oscar, I know you told me you like the Harry Potter books. You're a reader. Readers do so well on our program. And Dave, I know you like to read as well. Samuel Massey, nice to have you guys here. And if you've watched our show, you'll recognize two of these young men that were here last year representing their school. And your school is five years old now, I believe it is. Yes, and it's a beautiful school down there across the street from Andrew Jackson Middle. Yes. yes. And uh, what, what is it about Samuel Massey? It's a beautiful place. What do you like about it, Donnell? that we have a lot of activities that you do around the school and it's a lot of assistance helping helping the school and helping charities well that's really good because you know if that's why you're in school because you need some help you need some guidance and assistance and you've got good teachers and you've got a good principal there too who's your principal Donnell? Miss Michelle Pedro absolutely and who are the sponsors of your team Ms. Mufate and Mr. Douglas. And uh, I know Mr. Douglas is not here, but you brought uh, Ms. Smith with you today, didn't you? Yes. No. Was there another person besides Ms. Mufate who came with you today? Yes. Just some parents, correct? Yes. And I don't mean just parents, but we're, we're happy that they are here. So now, any alternates on your team? Wati and Aja. All right. We'll bring them out in just a few moments. And here you are back. Is it easier the second time around, Donnell? Yes. Yeah, you're not as nervous. You guys are doing a nice job. And... Mikkel, you were here last year, too, and you seem a little more relaxed. Mm -hmm. And Khalid is uh, hes new on the block. We'll get to him in just a second. Donnell, tell me before I leave you, what do you want to do when you get older? I want to be an FBI agent. Yeah. You seem like a nice, calm guy. I can see you as a detective. Uh, good luck with that. And Mikkel, nice to have you back again. Tell us the Mikkel story. What do you do in your spare time? Well, I like to draw 
and I like playing video games. Yeah, and you want to be a graphic artist, right? Mm -hmm. You got that native talent, and, uh, and David, you had not mentioned that you're also uh, someone who likes to draw, and uh, a lot of a lot of talent on this panel here today. And Khalid, why did you want to be part of the Science Boy? I know last year you were hoping to be here, but now you're here, right? Why did you want to be on the show? Well, apparently because I really like science, and my strong subject about science is space. Wow, and I know you want to. Uh, go to this. If you could be a space traveler, you would do that, I would think. Because you've always been interested. You told me earlier you have a, a microscope at home, so you can look at little things, and we hope you get a telescope, too, so you can look at the planets and the stars. Let's get back to our game. Almost a tie score. Port Town 75, Massey 70. Lots of points to give away. David, start us out. You gave us the last correct answer. Science potpourri for 10. Potpourri for 10 points teams. They recently passed a law in Oregon that makes it illegal to sell or make soup made from this dorsal part of the shark. Samuel Massey. Yes, sir. Um, the fin? The fin, yes. Dorsal fin, shark fin soup. And imagine... They cut off the fin and throw the rest of the shark back, and, of course, it can't survive. It's very cruel, so some states are taking a stand against that. All right, 80 points. Go, Donnell. Green things for 10. Green things, 10 points. Teams, one of America's favorite snacks is represented by a leguminous fellow with a monocle and a cane known as Mr. What? Samuel Massey. Mr. Peanut? Mr. Peanut, that's right. He is a dapper guy. Go, green. Body systems for 15. Body systems for 15 points. This is a con job question. You know, if you can't go to the bathroom, you suffer from constipation. And you know also that if your sinuses are all clogged up, you suffer from congestion. But if you suffer a sports injury to the head, you suffer one of these. Samuel Massey. Concussion. Concussion. That's the con in the con job question. That's it. Go. Green. Let's sign potpourri for five. Potpourri for five points. Teams, Washington Capitals player Alex Ovechkin recently posed next to a likeness of himself that was made entirely of this substance that your ear can make. <laughs> Poor Taz. Cartilage. Not cartilage, no. Samuel Massey. Your ear makes this substance, and recently Alice Ovechkin, posed, Alice Ovechkin posed next to a likeness of himself made of this substance. Wax? Wax, yes. Madame Tussauds Wax Museum here in Washington. Okay, nice try there, Eunice. You'll get them next time. Go green. Zupre for 20. Zupre, 20 points. Teams, look at the monitor in the studio, please. And yes, this is a mythological griffin, part eagle, part lion. It could never happen in real life because an eagle and a lion have vastly different numbers of these inside of their cells so that they could never come together and form a viable fertilized egg. Those species have different numbers of what's inside of their cells. Samuel Massey. Chromosomes? You got that right. Nicely done. Different numbers of chromosomes mean impossible breeding. Khalid, you're a nice asset to the team. Good. Go. Green. Body systems for 20. Body systems, 20 points. Teams, of the four substances that your body normally makes to get rid of waste, urine, feces, sweat, and breath, which one is most valued by doctors as a diagnostic tool because it will tell you something about the person's overall health? Come on, Port Towns. Urine. Urine. Urine, that's right. PP. All right, good. Go. Port Towns. A dateline science for five. Dateline for five points, teams. Your question is as follows. Scientists are relieved that some of these winged mammals are being discovered that are resistant to white-nosed fungus that is wiping out whole populations of them in caves. Port Towns. Bats. Bats, yes, okay. Our vet came through that time. Good, Oscar. Go. Red, you're at the century mark. 100, 130 for Massey. Still a good game. David. Green things for 20. Green things, 20 points. Teams, your question is as follows. Raspberries and blackberries have to pass through a bird's digestive system in order to germinate on the other side. What do they encounter, those seeds, as they go through the bird's digestive system? What is it that makes them germinatable? Port Towns. What happens to them inside? 
Talk among yourselves, Massey, in case I have to come to you. Oh, Dave? Like it's like the like yes, sir. I'd like to pass it to Oscar. Oscar? I said, I want, uh, can I pass it to her niece? Okay. Pollen? Don't be ringing. Don't be ringing the buzzer if you don't have an idea. Eunice, did you want to tell me something? Pollen. Pollen? No, not pollen. Raspberry and blackberry seeds, they won't germinate unless they pass through a bird's digestive system. What do they encounter on the way through that makes that seed now capable of germinating? Acids inside the stomach will work on the seed, and also birds have little stones in there that will rub against it and kind of abrade it and scratch it that will help it grow. Try again, Red. Let's get physical for 15. Let's get physical for 15 points, teams. A seesaw, sometimes people call it a teeter-totter, is actually a very simple kind of what machine? Samuel Massey, what kind of simple machine is a seesaw? I would like to pass it to Khalid. Khalid? A pulley. Not a pulley. Good try. A seesaw is what kind of simple machine, Dave? A triple beam balance. No, it's a lever. It's a lever. A kind of lever. Try again, red. Um, science potpourri 15. Potpourri for 15 points, teams. Recently in Egypt, in the desert, they found fossilized skeletons of these largest living animals that actually had legs back then. These were skeletons of what kinds of creatures? Donnell. Dinosaurs? Not dinosaurs. Largest living animals, I said. Port towns, skeletons, fossilized skeletons of these largest living animals found in the Egyptian desert. And these skeletons had legs back then. What animals were they, Dave? Whales. Whales. Try again, red. Dateline science for 10. Dateline for 10. Teams, this is exciting and scary both. Scientists now think by the year 2076, our brains will be connected directly to this that we now use our computers and our smartphones to surf. All right, Port Towns. A USB cord? No, no, Samuel Massey. Our brains will be directly connected to this that we now surf using computers and smartphones. A microchip? The internet, the internet. You were thinking too hard, guys. You were thinking too hard. All right, we seem to be stuck here. Come on, let's get some answers. David? Um, let's get physical for 20. Get physical for 20 points, teams. Of the eight planets in the solar system, the one with the shortest day, just 9.9 .9 hours, Jupiter. Samuel Massey. Jupiter. Jupiter? It is Jupiter, absolutely right. I was about to add it has the largest mass. Nicely done. Go, guys. Awesome. Zuparate for 25. Zuparate for 25, the big one in that category. Teams, if a mammal is a marsupial like a kangaroo, it's only after its baby is born as a tiny little grub that it climbs up into the pouch and then starts connecting to mother, taking nutrition. But in these other kinds of mammals, these P initial kinds of mammals like we are, the baby starts getting nutrition from the very moment that it is conceived, even before it is born. What kind of P-initialed mammals are we? Come on, for 25 points, Samuel Massey. Penguins? Wait, no, he said, are we? What did you say, penguins? Wait, Penguins, no, that's not correct. Port Towns, you can jump back into this game with 25 points. Tell me, animals that have this connection to their mother even before birth, we are part of those mammals. What kind of p initial mammals are we? Placenta. Placenta, the connection between the mother and the baby. Try again, green. Donnell. Um, Science Pope Free for 20. Pope Free for 20 points, teams. The robots that are used in non-invasive robotic surgery in some of the hospitals here in the Washington area are named for this famous Italian artist and scientist who we probably best know because he painted the Mona Lisa. Who is he, Samuel Massey? Leonardo da Vinci. That would be he, indeed. Thank you, Mikel. Good, go, green. The Da Vinci um, Robots. Dateline signs for 15. Dateline for 15 points. Multiple choice question teams. Because of an outbreak of avian flu in Hong Kong, the people there are slaughtering thousands of hogs, cows, or chickens to contain the disease. Samuel Massey. 
Cows, hogs, or chickens, young men? Um, we want to go with cows. Not cows, nope. An outbreak of avian flu in Hong Kong means they're slaughtering thousands of hogs, chickens, or cows, poor towns. Um, hogs? Nope. Avian is a word that, ref a word that refers to flight, aviary, birds, chickens. All right, come on, make some connections here. Go green. Green things for 25. Green things, 25 points. Big one in that category, teams. We all know about photosynthesis. Well, artificial photosynthesis is closer than we thought. Scientists now think they can take a molecule of water and split it with sunlight, generating oxygen, just like plants do, and also this other gas that we can use. What other gas could we generate by splitting that water molecule? Samuel Massey. Carbon dioxide? No, sir, not carbon dioxide. Come on, Port Towns. You've got a molecule of water, you're splitting it. Oxygen gas goes one way. What other kind of gas are you going to generate? Hydrogen. You got that right, because it's H2O. Good thinking. The buzzer has rung, which means, I think, despite that answer, Samuel Massey has done it. We'll be back with a wrap-up in just a moment. Don't go away. I knew I needed help paying for college. I've always wanted to be a teacher. I used to make worksheets for my friends to do. No one ever wanted to come over. My guidance counselor told me about federal student aid, and my mom helped me fill out the free application. I got the grants and loans that made school possible. There is a way to pay for school. You just have to find it. My name is Caitlin. I'm going to be a special education teacher. I'm going to live my dream. For years, scientists have explored remote corners of the Earth, searching for exotic substances that might help prevent cancer. At last, man has discovered a secret place where powerful remedies can actually be found. Medical research shows that a vegetarian diet rich in fruits, vegetables, and whole grains can help prevent many types of cancer. Wherever you live, cancer prevention is as close as your grocery store. To learn more, call 866-906-WELL. Thank you and welcome back. We hope you enjoyed this game. We had six wonderful young people here today. We're proud of each and every one of you for the game you played. You should feel proud of yourself. You brought a lot of honor to your school. Our final tally today is Samuel Massey 170, Port Towns 125. Congratulations, Samuel Massey, Khalid, and Donnell and Mikkel. You can smile, you guys won over there. Nicely done. Miss Mafate, congratulations to you. We'll see you in the next round against Beacon Heights. And over there, the alternates on the Samuel Massey team, Watia and Aja. I know how proud you are and I want to see some smiles over here you guys played a terrific game I like how you talk to each other Oscar and David and Eunice and back there it's a sea of yellow all of the alternates over there Owen and Driana and Jorge and Jakia and we also have Miss Smith, Miss Powell, Miss Blackson. Miss Blackson, thank you for all your wonderful work. And our principal, as the judges said, she's the sparkly one over there. Miss Farrakhan, thank you so much for being here and thank you. We'll see you next time on Science Bowl. Bye bye.